How do you defeat machines with medieval weapons? Hello, my fellow mechanists. I'm Jonathan, also known as the PC Genie. So yes, let's get to the point. Um, someone, one of my viewers, had asked in one of my live streams about if a machine, a mechanized opponent, you know, faced against someone and they only had medieval weapons to hand, what should they use and why? Now, the particular example of a machine that was given by the you know, person asking was if, for example, you're against a uh, Dwemer machine, the sort of Dwarven style things from the Elder Scrolls series, most especially Skyrim. They have these old ruins and the idea was they had sort of magic and science combined to make these sort of machines out of this material that uh, sort of looks a bit like bronze but is a uh, sort of dwarven material and they used it for various items really but most especially and most famously have these machines which could roll around and you know would sort of almost like a steampunk kind of feel but they had of course attachments like arm crossbows and swords coming out of their arms and various contraptions like that. So the question would be, if you went against that, what could you use in the context of something like Skyrim, which of course would mean, indeed, medieval weapons, what realistically would be the best for defeating them? Now, I'll extend this question to involve other machines as well, so we could have more sort of android-like robots in contrast. So if we look at things like iRobot the movie, or if we look at the Fallout, uh, Fallout 4's Institute Synths, so the idea of something that's designed to look and act sort of like a human, you know, they've got the same sort of arms and legs and head, and they have a sort of synthetic skin equivalent exterior and an interior, which is sort of an analogue to a human, but obviously it's still a mechanised robot with steel instead of bones and whatnot. So, that's one of the first things we should look at, the context of which exact type of machine we're looking at. Because, uh, if we're looking at something like those sorts of android type robots, then actually, you can treat them fairly similarly to a human. Especially when you look at the, most especially Fallout 4's Institute synths. Even with the way they have key components and parts in the same places and in the same fashion, as you have human organs, so sort of control boxes and areas around the brain and in heart areas, and bits like that. So what would kill a human pretty much would kill or destroy one of those types of robots. But also when you're looking at these synthetic equivalents to things like skins, they're usually that sort of texture and material, or it could be like a sort of rubbery material, or indeed something very close to flesh in order to try and replicate what the human skin feels like. So then, having something like a sword, or a similar cutting weapon, or perhaps something like a bow, is a very good idea. Because even though you can't really chop through bones and completely sever limbs, or decapitate someone, I mean, I'd say really it'd be very difficult, if not almost impossible, to do that on a medieval battlefield anyway. Spine and, you know, strong muscles, not strong muscles, sorry, strong bones in the limbs are a lot tougher than people give credit for, so actually severing body parts, it can be done, but I think in the movies they exaggerate how easy it is, so really, I think that we're talking about almost the same thing going on. So, with things like, for example, using a blade to cut open the neck, you could, instead of severing arteries, you could be severing key wires connecting the control box or something in the brain and perception areas because of course they have eyes similar to humans and ears so you'd be using those sensors from this area even if the main power and structure is in the torso section it would still render the robot pretty much useless in battle at that point and of course similarly you could do things like stab in between the rib cage or an equivalent or go through above where the collarbone would be into there and then get into whatever's contained within the torso and disable it, thus rendering the robot destroyed. So that's that. 
So again, with that sort of design, when you're looking at androids designed like humans, they pretty much can be destroyed or killed like humans. However, it's a completely different story when we're talking about things like the Dwemer robots, because they, instead of having a, a, a steel skeleton and then having a sort of synthetic skin equivalent, you know, perhaps some sort of silicon gel or rubber on the exterior, instead, we're actually talking about machines that would have a fairly good skeletal structure, probably, in a similar fashion to humans, to keep them together and to especially have things like the pistons and pivots, as well as other components to help aid in movement. You would also have, as you see in the Elder Scrolls series, or on certain stereotypical robots in certain types of media, too many to list, you actually have a steel or similar metal exterior as well. At which point, a cutting weapon like a sword becomes almost useless. Unless there are gaps in areas like, for example, perhaps the equivalence of eyes or sensors would actually be weak enough that you could use a thrusting weapon and then we have to treat, we basically have to treat them like an armoured opponent. Certain areas might well be weaker, like the equivalence of eyes or sensors or particular control arrays, which in that case you could do things like half sorting, which is grabbing a blade halfway long and manoeuvring it finely and very in a very controlled manner into particular areas, then that could help. But apart from that, the sword isn't really going to help because, of course, you could perform a slashing attack and unless it's a very thin metal or it's a particularly weak metal, which is unlikely, then it's just, it's just going to, at best, cause a scratch on the outside of the robot. They won't even feel it because they're not human and then they just repost and kill you for real. So instead, what we have to look at is either if you must use something like a sword, it's your only weapon, and perhaps doing something like what's called a Mordhau or Murder Stroke, using the pommel or quillens, like a pickaxe or a mace, to smash into the robot, or the more obvious choice for such a purpose, something like a mace. Now I think something like a mace would be the perfect weapon to use. You can combine it with a shield, so you can make sure you're covered from any attacks, projectile or close-up, that the robot will be de delivering, you can still be agile and nimble, so it's not a particularly heavy weapon. You can still move around if it perhaps is able to just grab a human and hug it to death. Next sort of thing. Then you can still try to evade out of its way with your weapon around. But also, of course, the blunt impact, apart from the fact that it can cause damage to the actual hull itself, much like you can do things like dent helmets and breastplates and areas like that, there is also the situation of internal damage. Now, this is an interesting one. I suppose I have a bit of an advantage because I used to work in after sales of a particular call centre who were servicing for a retailer. Now, one of the things I noticed was that you'd get, apart from faulty electronics that I handled in the after sales, you would also get situations of damaged electronics. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is that sometimes you could have something like a laptop or a tablet and let's say someone dropped it. Now they pick it up and they'll look at the exterior hull, so all the outside, which in a robot's case could be indeed the steel structure on the outside, and you could look at it and you wouldn't even know any impact happened. Maybe a slight scratch, it would look fine. However, with the way the vibrations have happened, or I don't know, I'm not a physicist, but somehow, by the impact happening, the hull on the outside remains completely intact, but the key electronics on the inside are heavily damaged. Now, this could apply to something like a mace. Even if you've got a robot with a very thick or strong structure, that when you smash it with a mace, is actually just is hardly even denting it, if at all, you could still have that force going through and damaging the components on the inside, unless they've done something to design against that, maybe with some padding in the same way as an arming cap works, in or lining works inside a helmet, for example, or a gambeson underneath a breastplate. Then, of course, that would be nullified a lot more, but I can't imagine they'd necessarily think of that, unless well, maybe they would, I don't know. 
but it's worth a try at least. So having something like a mace hitting them would actually mean even if you don't destroy the outside, you might still destroy the inside. And of course, again, things like the servos, pistons, motors and pivots and all of those components which are most important probably will be on the inside protected behind the armor if not and they're on the outside well why not just damage them directly then BAM <laughs> so yes that's what I think about fighting robots so you can to a degree fight them like humans that's another thing so having a good idea of combat in the first place things like your distance and timing being able to do things like you can see the, the robot maybe has a sword arm that can swing and go like that and you can be just barely out of range perhaps have a shield or buckler do a covered swing with your mace and then smack them on the head or something or smack them on whatever equivalent they have to a head anyway then you can damage them and do quite a bit of nastiness and in that sense someone who is a warrior and fights against people could still have a bit of an advantage in fighting against robots, as long as they know to adapt their tactics for the situation at hand, in the same way as you'd adapt your tactics to unarmoured and armoured fighters. So that's my input for today. Comment below if there's any details that I might have missed and you've thought of anything else, and see you later.